Okay, so now I'm gonna show you string action. So to lower the string action, if you wanted to, um, you could turn it, you turn the Allen key in a counterclockwise motion, okay? To raise the string action, you turn it clockwise towards the right, okay? So remember, counterclockwise will lower the string action, right? Clockwise will raise it, all right? And you really, really need to get each of these saddles here. These are the saddles, right, with the two holes in them, right? You wanna get them even. Like if you look at mine, they're pretty even on each side. You don't want them to be off on each side as best as you can, you know? Because if they're on even on each side, that starts to mess with the string spacing, all right? Um, that will make, you know, it'll either widen the string spacing gap or um, narrow it. On this base, I definitely need it to be where it is because if I widen it anymore, the string's gonna be like a, almost like a five string neck. This this neck is really, really thick. It's a 1.75 uh, uh, nut width. Um, it's a really, really wide neck. Um, and anyway, if you look how I have my saddle set, and this is for mo all my bases are pretty much set this way, very similar. The, um, where the E string sits, right? The saddle is actually lower than your A. And if you look at the A and the D, I usually the same. And the E and the G string are usually in the same, uh, you know, about the same height as well. So if you look at that, that's pretty much how I set my string action. I'm not messing with it now because it's actually really good on this base. Uh, that's why I'm not actually adjusting, but I'm just showing you how I would. Um, and then how do you know that your string action is where you want it? Well, you know, you could tell a lot on the on the fretboard. I mean, it's natural to have some buzz, okay? But there'll be times when you're playing and like, especially in the upper register, and if it's just, if the, if the note is just choking out and you're not getting anything, then you know that you have to raise the string action. You're gonna turn it to the right, just a hair on each on each side of the saddle and bring it up until you have a little buzz, but just where it's enough where you can hear the note, you know? Um, and also, you know, if you plug it into an amp, um, sometimes you hear the note a little louder than when it's when you're playing it without the amp, because sometimes you're playing without the amp and you hear, you hear them buzzing, but you put it in an amp, you don't hear the buzzing anymore. And it's like, oh, wow, you know, I don't even hear it. So like, it's, it's like, man, <laughs> Sometimes you can get your action really low. It'll buzz a little bit when it's on, you know, you're playing it without the amp. You put it in the amp and you don't even hear that buzz anymore. And you're like, oh man, that's great. Um, so anyway, but that's like, you know, I usually check, you know, all around here, I'll check that area. And if, if, the, if the notes are choking out and you can't hear them at all, and you know, then you know you have to raise it a little bit. And I do a little at a time. I turn a tiny bit at a time, like a drop, you know? Um, you don't overturn it. And also, obviously, I'm gonna let you know if you keep adjusting these, obviously, if you're tightening and bringing, if you're going to the right uh, clockwise motion and you're bringing up the saddles, you definitely have to retune your strings. So it's gonna put this, all the strings out of whack. Um, you know, a lot of the times they say if you lower it, it doesn't really have any effect on it. But, um, you know, I, I mean, always tune up after anyway. Um, so anyway, that, that was pretty much it for that. Um, I'm glad that you did get to see um, you know, how I check relief. There's a lot of other methods for doing it as well. I mean, you could put a, um, a ruler on it and a straight edge and you let them sit on the frets. I actually have a precision base um, ruler that has notches. It sits over the frets and it fits right on it. There's a gap um, right in that sweet spot, the seventh and the eighth fret. If there's a gap underneath the ruler, then you know that you have to, um, you have to tighten the truss rod a little bit. And if there's no gap and it's like the strings are just like resting on it, well, pretty much if it was a little higher than mine and you couldn't even get the feeler gauge in there, then you know you have to loosen the truss rod a little bit and bring some relief in. So always remember the more gap you have in this area, okay, you wanna tighten the truss rod a little bit to put in less relief. If it's all the way up against the string and there's no room to fit that, that feeler gauge, right? Then you know you have to loosen that the truss rod, a hair, a drop. Do it a little bit at a time. Don't over tighten, don't over loosen, okay? Um, just so you know. Um, and you're also going to see that the tension of the strings on any bass, you always look, no bass neck is ever perfectly flat. I just want to show you that like anything that you want to know is that um, when you're looking up here, you're always going to see a slight curve up. It's because of the tension of the strings. We're at full tuning here. E standard tuning, there's a lot of tension pulling on the strings. And actually, 
the heavier gauge strings you have, the more tension you're gonna have on those on the neck. It's gonna pull the neck forward more, all right? So the more it pulls forward, you're gonna have more of a gap in that area, um, which means then you'd have to tighten the truss rod. Um, I put light gauge strings on my base. I use uh, 95s to 40s. I like less tension on my neck. I like my neck to have less tension and I don't wanna have to deal with heavy gauge strings and tension on the neck and messing with the neck because I mean, I've just been told it could, you know, screw around with the neck. And I don't want to, like, warp it or mess it up. Anyway, that's um, pretty much all I have to say on that. Um, and I'll do, I'll do a full-out video one time when I'm actually changing strings and, and all that good stuff. So you can see that. But, um, you know, listen, it's just a, just a video to help you guys out and, and explain the process a little bit. But, um, man, she is beautiful. <laughs> Look at this base. But um, I just want to say, like, if you do not know what you're doing, don't screw around. Take it to a professional. Um, I also recommend, you know, doing it on an inexpensive base. I started out playing, like, with the, uh, you know, doing my tune-ups and uh, setups and all this stuff. I practiced on an SX base. It cost me literally, like, 250 bucks. You know, if you have a squire laying around the house, something like that, um, an inexpensive base, that's where you practice doing setups and adjusting the truss rods and getting the base the way you like it. Um, you know, I've now stepped up. Now I can do it on my Yamaha Attitude, my Fender Precisions and all those bases because now I'm not, I'm not afraid. I know I'm not going to damage the guitar. But, um, you know, even me, my level of, of knowledge of this stuff and, and, you know, I still take it into the shop to get it set up. You know, I get a base out of the box. I always take it to a shop because they'll know if there's something wrong with it. And, you know, they have that professional eye and, and, you know, they set it up, they get it kind of like where I like it. And then I know I take it home and I'm always like adjusting the string action, messing around, adjusting the truss rod a tiny bit and I get it to where I like it. So, um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and, uh, hope it really helps you in your, uh, in your playing journey and that it helps you to get the action the way you like it. I like mine really low. So if you're one of those players, you're going to definitely appreciate <laughs> how I have my action, um, but it's all preference. Everybody likes it, likes the action the way they do. So I mean, I don't, you know, I just don't like mine high because the style of play I do. I play very fast and progressive um, kind of stuff, and a lot of movement. So it's very hard for me to have high actions. That's why I actually like the uh, action to be low. So anyway, um, like I said, hope this video real was really helpful to you, and that you know it just helps you out in the journey. So in your bass playing journey. Um, all right. So I'll see you all uh, soon, and I'll. Uh, post some more videos soon. Thank you and have a good night.